All righty. Welcome to Cheese in Depth. Today I'm with Jeremy Stevenson from Spring Book Farm and a, uh, a whole gaggle of his uh, cohorts and friends and associates today, including uh, people from the farm. So it'll be uh, quite entertaining. We have uh, videos, we have stories, we have cheese and want everybody to know that uh, there's questions available. So down at the bottom, you'll see a little question mark. So if you have a question as we go through here, I'll keep an eye on that and we'll go from there. In the meantime, I'm gonna be turning it over to Jeremy Stevenson. And he's gonna also, in addition to this, introduce the crew uh, to uh, Springbrook Farm and everything that we got going here. So, Jeremy, take it yep. away. Okay. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. Um, this was inspired by a lot of the work we've done over many years with Michael Landis, where we, uh, you know, often are traveling to where he is. And because of this new world in which we are not traveling, uh, we're, we're, this is our first webinar talking about our product. And Michael has given us that opportunity today to, to, to reach out to all of you in a way that we never, never have before. So it's pretty exciting. Um, we have on, on the folks you'll be meeting from the cheese program today are two other sales associates who are Lisa Griffin at Springbrook Farm right now. And she's gonna take you on a tour of the aging room. And then Steve Jones, who is an author that can tell you about one of his books related to pairings and tasting. He's helping us out with sales and he is going to work with Michael at the end of this session on uh, tasting some cheese along with some beer and cider. Our first cheese that we're gonna um, talk about is going to be? Uh, the Redding is uh, styled after raclette. So uh, a very traditional Alpine cheese uh, from either France, Switzerland, Austria, all throughout the Alps. And this is a cheese that's very traditionally melted and served over potatoes with sausages and cornichon and mustard. You know, one of the great uh, ways to come to the table with friends. And so that's kind of the, where this cheese is, comes from. But I think it's a great standalone cheese also. It, it's a really fun cheese to pair with different beverages. And, uh, it's a, it, with the Jersey cow's milk, it's nice and rich, but it's got that really nice funk to it. it I think if you were to describe one thing that's predominant with this cheese, is that just nice, funky richness. Great mouth coating quality. And like I said, a, a fantastic ingredient cheese for sure. Um, when I was fortunate enough to get over to the Alps um, a few years back, and visited a raclette maker in Switzerland, really close to the French line, um, just over the border. Um, I learned that they make, you know, the make that I watched was really familiar. And I realized then, you know, that we'd been taught, when Alex taught us to make the, the Redding uh, raclette style, you know, how well we'd been taught and how close we were to them. and the key point about it I'll say is a lot of the raclette that you will find in supermarkets and, and various um, shops doesn't have a clean flavor so you can have that nice funkiness that Steve's talking about that's not overdone at all I would say but not a dirty flavor and I think somehow people think raclette has to be melted to be good you know, but that's not the case with our cheese and we like it as a table cheese as well. And that's the case with the good stuff over in Europe too. Just thought I'd throw that in there. This has got so much uh, cooked butter, really rich, uh, that it has a very different, fla different flavor than what you would expect from a typical raclette of being a little bit more bitter. This has got a sweetness, but it also has a tanginess. You can really taste a nice sour cream out of this. That's, that's really fresh. And, and right up front. So, you know, when I was thinking about pairing this, um, and, and Jeremy, we've done this uh, with uh, Taste Elevated uh, and, and before, is uh, I actually have uh, their tomato 
uh, they're a roasted tomato uh, uh, pesto. And honestly, when you have that tomato and then you have this little bit of tanginess, a little bit of sour cream, this is really amazing. But really, what, it, what you can do is uh, I have these uh, uh, brewer's crackers. And these brewer crackers are, are spent grain, and this is an everything. So you put the, the uh, tomato, the pesto, the grain, and the cheese together, and this is literally like a meal. Mm. Steve, what do you got? Um, well, I, I've got the beverage into things going on over here. So um, I brought a little uh, cider because I'm a huge fan of cider with Vermont cheeses. I think there's such a big cider tradition in Vermont that it always makes sense. And also I think that um, cider is probably your best beverage for cheese pairing, period. It's got all the secret weapons that you need to go with cheese. You've got fruit, you've got acid, you've got, in this case, funk. And so I've got a, a really nice little funky uh, local Oregon cider from Sunbreak Cider that uh, I really love those clean, funky notes. And like, uh, like Jeremy said earlier, when I'm saying funky, I'm not talking dirty funky, I'm talking the clean 4-H barn funk. You know, the smell of an animal that, that's clean and living well is kind of the, the, that funky note that I'm looking at. And these ciders are done in the tradition of kind of a box cider, so they've got more of that beautiful, uh, earthy funk to them. But this is a really fun combination, accentuating both. Well, I went with the uh, Von Trump, uh, their uh, black lager. This is a Vermont uh, brewery. And uh, black lagers bring that cleanliness. And that's really what I wanted to do because it has so much butter to it and, and, uh, and that sour cream. I really wanted to tame down a little bit of that sour cream, bring out a little bit of butter. And, you know, with beers, it's liquid bread. So you get, especially with a black lager, you get the cleansiness of the lager, but you also get that, uh, that darker grain flavor, which really brings a real richness to the cheese. With a, with, and uh, the cheese really brings out more of that, that dark grain. So you really get a uh, little bit of a heavier feel, but at the same point, it's very cleansing. Uh, I, it's got a great combination, and and uh, I'm trying. These guys do it a really amazing black lager. Yeah, I'm jealous that we can't get it out here, but I've had it when I've been out in Vermont. It's a fantastic beer. Yeah, and I love uh, the fact that Michael and I both came from different angles. I went with comparative. I went funk on funk, and Michael went with more of contrast, where he's using that lighter cleansing aspect of the beer to you know contrast it and I think both give a really different approach to to the pairing. Hmm. There's more than one way to skin a cat when it comes to pairings. You know and Absolutely. it's also in the like love in the eye of the beholder. You know that uh, you can have people yesterday I used all uh, uh, IPAs lots of uh, hoppiness in there. So you have people that are just like, you know, I'm not going to do the hoppiness. But, you know, when you pair something, it's like a relationship. You're going to get things that work well together and things that don't work well together and then things that just are amazing. And, yeah. that, uh, you know, when you look at the cider, you look at that crispness, you look at the flavor, you know, adding apple to this would be absolutely fantastic. You know, and that's kind of where you went with the apple citrus. I went with the tomato citrus. And uh, that really just kind of brings it up. We get more butter out of it. We get more richness. It really expands the flavor characteristics of this. And Jeremy, you know, honestly, this cheese doesn't need anything. It is magnificent on its own. You know, uh, I am uh, very, very grateful for the, the, the physical size of this because this is going to be my uh, meals for the next like three or four days. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Sure. So anything else on, uh, on this before we go to the next cheese? Well, just one thing that I thought of earlier in the conversation, everyone's kind of gone back to the relationships of everyone involved from milk to maker to ager 
the consumer. And that's, I think, what's really beautiful about these Alpine style cheeses is that that story that, you know, of all the entire community that's involved to make this product. And I thought it was really cool to, you know, hear George's perspective and then Jeremy's perspective and then Lisa's and then now mine and Michael's. It's, it's, it's that whole entire community that it takes to make this cheese that makes it even more magic to me. Absolutely, absolutely. Good observation. All right, yeah. so. So Ashbrook is my very favorite of the uh, Springbrook Farm cheeses. This is a, a cheese that, I, to borrow a term that a friend of mine uses, he says it's Moorish, meaning you want to eat more and more of it. It's a cheese I just want to sit down and eat a quantity of. Uh, it's styled after Morbier. Uh, traditional Morbier obviously was morning and evening milk. This is all from the same milk, but it had a layer of vegetable ash through the middle. Um, it's a slightly different make process than the Redding, but you get a you get a pretty different cheese. I really like the acidity and the brightness of this cheese, uh, and that's part of that Moorish aspect to it, where I just want to keep coming back because it it leaves your mouth watering, and you just want to keep the experience going. And with this cheese, I put it with a sparkling Lambrusco. Uh, any sparkling rosé would work nicely, but uh, the sparkling Lambrusco is amazing with it. That acidity in both of them, really, really nice, but that little bit of funk up against that really bright kind of cherry fruit, it, it's like Michael said, uh, occasionally you get the two together and they become a magic third. I think this is a classic example of that happening. This has got a lot of... Um buttery flavors to it but also there's a very distinct um, uh, yeastiness to this particular cheese uh, and uh, especially when you get closer to the rind on there and I didn't want to mask that but what I wanted to do was really give this a, a, a push and so uh, I'm using a, a cranberry uh, chut with some real, uh, you know, uh, sweetness on here to kind of boost up and uh, kind of take out a little bit of that yeastiness. Butter, cranberry, ices, really, 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 really nice. And I'm pairing it up with uh, the Goose Island 312. Uh, it's a wheat beer, and because this is so much butter and it has that yeastiness, I really wanted to kind of throw in a little bit of the, the wheat style. You know, wheat having a little bit more yeastiness and a bread-like quality. But when you put the two together, what you get is you kind of like balance out that yeast to be kind of like a sweet bread with some butter on it, so you get a sweet bread butter. Nice. Yeah. Does that have some of that kind of banana ester note? No, uh, they don't. Uh, this is not a Hefeweizen style. They don't use okay. any colander or, uh, or, or any other of the flavors. This is this is really clean wheat. You know. So um, so when you put these two together, you're, it's it's very very nice. Um, and and so you kind of going along with that uh, sweetness is. Uh, going with like an Effie's, uh, the rye cake. Putting a rye cake in here uh, with, the, with the, the beer, you get more sweetness. It almost turns into uh, kind of like a, a butter shortbread when you have all those together and uh, the sweetness here. But it's also cleansing because you have that nice flavor uh, of this wheat beer. Very, very well done, very, very easy structured. Uh, I can't imagine that anybody wouldn't like it for the fact that it's just so easy to drink. Yeah, it sounds like a great combo. And mainly with this warm weather, perfect beer for this warm weather. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, with the, uh, instead of the Rosé Lambrusco, when I was in Vermont for the festival this summer, we used uh, from Shelburne Vineyards, their uh, Ipetus. It's a Le Croissant, it's a, it's a grape varietal. And it has a lot of skin contact and it's got that kind of like peach skin quality to it. 
and kind of the same way where you're, you're accentuating that sweetness a little bit and, and really working on that. I think all of these were kind of talking about that fruity note that makes it a little elevating that sweetness a bit. Yeah, uh, you know, they, they come off with a little bit of that, um, uh, I wouldn't say quite tannins, but it's, it's definitely has a little bit of bitterness, which brings up the sweetness of the cheese, that buttery flavor. Really, I, I just adore that. You know, there are not a lot of people that pick it, and I really give you a lot of credit because that is a really nice combination. No, I love, I love um, hearing, hearing you guys talk about that, and I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm feeling like I wish I had a beer and a piece of cheese in front of me. But we're <laughs> Let's see. So this is good. Uh, when you talked about the whole community, I think it is also really interesting to point out that both Lisa and Steve, Steve currently owns a shop. Both of them are cheesemongers. They both have been cheesemonger owners of cheese shops, which I think gives them some, some real cred, you know, for, to, and it, it's, it's great to be working with them both now, uh, on, on the sales work, et cetera. And, uh, and you can tell what it what it brings, you know, because they've they've got this background. And by the way, Lisa, if you have any thoughts on these pairings, I hope you chime in too. Flagship cheese for Springbrook Farm. Uh, the, you know, the tea is the start of the whole thing. Uh, it's won best of show at the American Cheese Society two times. It's it's kind of the cheese of legend among mongers out there. Uh, this cheese is super complex. It can show a, a gigantic range of flavors. Uh, and as it, as it moves into the Tarantase Reserve into the world, you get really, really amazing umami and, and depth of flavor that you just don't find in that many cheeses. You'll move into pineapple and burnt orange, broccoli, you, you super umami bomb notes. Uh, so this is a super complex cheese and a really fun one for the right beverage, I feel. So what are you pairing? I decided to go with uh, the Trappist Rochefort 6. So it's a doable uh, from a Trappist Monastery Brewery in Belgium. And what I love about this beer with mountain cheese is it, it latches onto those sweeter, nuttier notes. And really the two together, like, like I mentioned, burnt orange earlier, you get this complexity that it's like a, a very complex dessert, but yet with a lot of savory components at the same time. Well, we're definitely doing opposites. Uh, I think <laughs> uh, a brown ale, uh, this is uh, the local brewery. This is uh, uh, Cigar City, and uh, this is Maduro Brown. Um, it is probably one of the classy, uh, classic style browns. Really, really heavy in the maltiness in here. So I got all this malt. I have all this butter. I have all this nuttiness. I have a malty, nutty, buttery uh, flavor that is just incredible. Add a little bit of, uh, I have... The uh, Rustic Bakery, and this is uh, a tart cherry and uh, cocoa nib and almond. And so you put those guys together with this, and it is just incredible with the maltiness and uh, across the board. So I'm really not adding anything into this uh, liquid other than the beer. So uh, it's just uh, a little bit of the, the crackers or, or the uh, crisp that work out really well. But uh, uh, I've, uh, I've been pairing Tarotase with brown ale. Uh, that's been kind of like my go-to for a, a really long time. And I know that Jeremy and I had uh, sat on a panel in, uh, uh, I believe it was Orlando or Pompano, one of the two, uh, where we had Cigar City there. And we paired this up ex exclusively with it because it's just such a easy, easy to drink and eat and, and uh, enjoy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I also agree. I think that the, the, the reason I chose the Trappist, the Double is for the multi components of it, because it, it is that 
sweet cereal note that I think really works nicely with the Terran taste. So I think ultimately, yeah, we're kind of in agreement. Malts are the secret weapon with this cheese. What do you think, Jeremy? Well, you know, I was just going to say, I learned to like Belgian beers with Tarantais alongside, and that, that's how I introduced the Belgian beers. So Belgians in general, but I, I would, especially today with the weather here, I would pick a season, to, you know, uh, to go with that. And I think it would work. What do you guys think? You can you argue with me. broke up for a second. What did you pick? What'd you pick, Jeremy? I, I missed that. Oh, uh, Saison. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the weather, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I more, I'm more of a wine drinker than a beer drinker myself. And I will say that about a month ago, we opened up a wheel of Tarantay's Reserve. That was probably one of the best Tarantay's I've ever tasted. So we all took some home. And I've had it with two of my very favorite wines, and it's fantastic with both. One is a Vermentino, which is an Italian white, and mm -hmm. it's buttery but not oaky, so it's got you know a rich kind of mouthfeel, and there's almost a, a pineapple-y note to the Tarantay's Reserve when it ages that long that goes really nicely together. And I also had it with a Dolcetto de Alba, which is my other favorite wine. I know they're both Italian, but <laughs> I'm a little partial. Um, and the nice kind of Dolcetto is more of like a balanced, it's not super oaky, it's not super tannic, and it's also not very fruity or berry forward. So it's nice and dry and kind of also complements the cheese really well. Oh, I've got to say that I'm remembering a, an experience down at uh, down in Boston when I was I was doing a demo with Tarantes at uh, Romaggio Kitchen, and I, I I would say to this day it's one of the best pairings I've ever had of Tarantes with something else, and it was a Cab Franc, just a flat, straight straight up Cab Franc, no blend whatsoever, but just a nice, simple, solidly made wine, and it just elevated the Tarantes amazingly. That was like nine years ago, and I'm still remembering it very clearly. <laughs> so, in fact, that's the best. So, your comment about Dolcetto, too, Lisa, you know, that reminded me of that. Yeah, it's Dolcetto can be that way. It goes really well with white or red, depending on, you know, the age of the cheese and or the wine. Uh, you know, I think that when we are looking at pairings and one of the suggestions that I always give is start off with a wine that you really like and you really like the cheese so even if they don't work perfectly together you still got a great wine and you got a great cheese so you're not going to lose in that battle you know? but uh, it is going to change things you're going to get either more or you're going to get neutral or you're going to get less so it's it's really kind of what you're in the mood for as well I've done the same pairings. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years. So I have, you know, repetitively done these and uh, with the, a lot of the seminars, they repeat that and they do taste differently. And also what Jeremy said earlier is that seasonality, we're gonna have a little bit of variation in the cheese. So even if it was this, if it wasn't as strong, the wine may be a little bit more umpy and then, or the cheese might be. And then you look at the varietal, um, you know, that was that a good year? Uh, is it stronger this year? Is it weaker? Did they blend it differently? So you have a lot of factors in there. There's a lot of fudge that goes into the pairings. And I, I like to tell people to really relax about them and go out and just have some fun. Take what you like, put it together. And that helps them uh, really be able to enjoy being able to do these pairings. Now, uh, for me, uh, being that I've did this for so long, a lot of them are just natural, but I can tell you, they're they're different. Yeah, you know, and I feel like you learn more from, from failures than you do from success quite often. You know, if you make a really bad combination, you're not gonna forget it. So, 
You know, there's nothing to be lost from, from having a failure occasionally. Well, a lot of times I think that when you get into the pairing, understanding what it is that you don't like about it helps you understand what you're going to look for. So you're saying, okay, exactly. well, this didn't work because of this. You know, you're then you're getting into that really good point of understanding why. And when you do that, it's easier to start pairing because you know what that characteristic is bad for that cheese for you. Yeah. So Lisa, uh, you didn't get to talk about uh, the first two cheeses. So what do you pair up with wine with them? Uh, let's see. Well, with uh, Redding, I'm also partial to cider. Um, so I, I would, especially in a hot day like today, with either Redding or Ashbrook, I would go with maybe a nice kind of not too sweet, but um, and also not too dry or funky because, you know, some of those ciders can get kind of almost, they can get almost musty. But I would go with a nice in-between. It's 93 degrees here today, and it sounds really nice to sit down with uh, a little Redding or Ashbrook and a cider, for sure. And, yeah, I uh, think that Eden Rosé would be really good. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. You know, ciders uh, are, I think, when you're looking at artisan-made ciders, they have a tendency to have some characteristics that can really work much better with artisan cheeses because of the complexity that you have. You know, a lot of times you talk about the affordability of the pairings and for wines, for most cheeses, if you're spending over $25, you're, you're kind of getting out of that whole you know, direction. You can do very well in that scope of this, the lighter wines. The lighter wines a lot of times do better. The beers, uh, the craft beers, like uh, you know the Cigar City, they have a wider variety, but the intensity of this is so rich that it pairs incredibly well. So any last comments before we uh, wrap up here? Steve? Um, none for me, just, just, these are great cheeses to pair with, with any beverages. They're, they're fantastic on a, on a board or as a ingredient, but I, I really and truly feel they all stand as a, as, as an independent product and not needing to be cooked with for sure. Lisa? I agree with that 100%, although I will say that I absolutely love to cook with them too. You know, I made a uh, French onion soup two days ago with Tarantay's croutons, and I no love nothing more than just in the winter, roasting up some vegetables and melting some redding on top. So I think part of the beauty is that you can do just about anything with them. Yeah. Jeremy? Well, I just want to say thank you all. And um, I'm going to admit up front, I was pretty nervous about doing a webinar. All the things that we've done together, Michael, you know, in front of, you know, small to reasonably large groups, you know, quite large sometimes, uh, you know, wasn't as intimidating as the idea of getting on the internet and talking to people that you can't see and a lot of whom you probably don't know. But, you know, this has been a lot of fun. And I'm, 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 the wheels are turning about how we could do more of this for Springbrook. And, um, and I really appreciate everybody participating. And please, uh, everybody out there know that our cheese is for sale at sbfcheese.org. We have had our website set up to sell cheese for uh, at least a month now. So, uh, so we're, we're, we're there readily accessible but of course if possible get out and support your cheesemonger in whatever way because we love those sales in the store so thanks a lot and thanks for featuring us michael and all, all the work you're doing for all the other cheesemakers too 
My pleasure. It's it's a it's a pleasure being able to see you again, Steve. Thank you for coming in. It's so cool to see you, Lisa. Nice to meet you, and uh, I can't wait to us to do another one. And of course, Jeremy, my friend, always always good to see you. And uh, and like I said, thank you for the uh, great visit uh, last year up to Vermont. So I really appreciate that. All right. All right so. Uh, what's coming up next uh, tomorrow? Uh, we have Vermont Creamery, so we have a Vermont week, and then at the end of the week, we are going to have uh, Deer Creek, but it's going to be five retailers that are going to be part of it. So we're going to divide the cheeses up, have a lot of fun with that, and uh, we'll kind of keep that entertainment going. So I want to thank you guys. Be very careful, be safe, and take care. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank we'll see you. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Take care.